Hey folks, Quilly Teen here with some gaming news. A, um, uh, an expansion for RimWorld just dropped today. Not a preview, not a pre-release, not early access. It's just, it's just out. It's just out and you can just buy it today. And there was really no advance warning that it was coming. I checked my email, like, hold on. I didn't get something from a PR company, nothing like that. Nope, just out of the blue nowhere, a brand new expansion for RimWorld, or the first expansion from RimWorld. Anyway, it's called RimWorld Royalty. Uh, maybe taking a few more notes from Dwarf Fortress, which was always a massive inspiration for RimWorld, that and like Prison Architect and stuff. Um, now we can have royal titles. Colonists can gain royal titles bestowed by the Empire. A, count, a knight or count can call upon the Empire's elite troops in times of need, okay. Bond with a unique blade link weapon, okay. And wield psychic abilities, okay. Those who hold titles become haughty and demanding. They need luxurious bedrooms and grand throne rooms. They'll issue wild decrees that must be carried out. They'll make inspiring or demoralizing speeches from the throne. They'll play piano, harp, and harpsichord. They'll demand royal clothes or crowns. In fact, if we take a look at the game that I've got loaded here, just random setup, um, just did confirm. We got complex clothing over here into noble apparel, into royal apparel. Uh, we've got the musical instruments over here. I usually play modded, so like, part of me is like, how many of these things are part of the base game? I don't know if there's anything else later on that we haven't seen yet. Um, I don't know about this, like, poison wiring, poison synthesis, or brain wiring, poison synthesis. This sort of area over here, I don't know if it was in the base game before then. Um, healing factors, flesh shaping. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how many of these things are, are new in the base game versus whatever, because I play way too much modded. Um, I notice even right now at the start of the game where I haven't done anything yet with uh, with the characters here. This is this is not the start of a new game. This is just me loading in. If we took a look at furniture, yeah, there you go. We got a throne and a grand throne room. So yeah, nobles apparently have a need for authority. I wonder if this would show up at all over here. No. So probably once someone becomes a noble, they'll probably get another need over here called authority that they'll have to satisfy from sitting on the throne. Where's my uh, where's my window over here? And then, yeah, psychic powers. Titles give the right to an imperial psychic amplifier. Those who hold one can use their mind to manipulate and defeat their foes. Psycasters can blind enemies or mind control them, block sensations of pain, or confer deadly focus on an ally. Advanced psychasts induce mass vomiting in crowds of foes, teleport objects or people, Drive enemies insane en masse, or render allies temporarily invisible stealth attacks. For those who wish to live as rebels against the Empire, there are other ways of acquiring psychic amplifiers as well. What the heck? I mean, each one of these so far, you know, just the idea of royalty could have been an expansion. The psychic powers could have been an expansion. We're getting both, and then we're getting quest mechanics in here added in, more than what was already in there. Earning royal titles means completing quests. Since RimWorld is a story generating generation game, quests aren't fixed like in other games. Instead, the system procedurally generates unique quests with every game, different goals, foes, guests, rewards, helpers, special threats, and world conditions combined to create endless varied stories and challenges. Quests will reward you with new allies, unique implants, arco-technological artifacts, gear, royal titles, faction goodwill, and more. Quest givers may even provide special helpers during the quest. For example, a quest may ask you to fight a huge mechanoid cluster, but also include help from elite Imperial cataphracts to make the battle winnable. The purpose of quests is to generate dramatic stories that couldn't happen otherwise. Quest challenges are grander and more exotic than day-to-day -day defense, but they, I assume, only happen if you accept them. Hosting quests ask the player, so hosting quests, ask the player to host a group ah, of dangerous prisoners, haughty royals, derpy pets, <laughs> uh, hunted refugees, and other guests. The, the guests may be injured or healthy, useful allies or helpless burdens, single or numerous. They may be hunted by mercenaries, pirates, mechanoids, or more. You might need to get the guests to an escape shuttle under fire. Construction quests ask the player to build something special and sometimes protect it from attacks. Systems quests ask you to send some of your colonists to help an ally for some time. Site quests open nearby sites that present opportunities, threats, and mysteries. Threat quests present special combinations of mechanoid clusters, raids, animal attacks, atmosphere effects, weather, and more in exchange for rewards. The final quest comes after you've climbed the ranks of Imperial nobility. Host the Imperial High Stellarch and his elite Stellic guards in your luxurious court. Protect them from their enemies and be invited to leave the Rimworld as an honored royal guest. And then there's more mech clusters. Mechanoids can now create mechanoid clusters. Oh, this sounds positive. I'm, I'm gonna be so pleased about this, I'm sure. Groups of new mechanoid buildings which work together to present a unique tactical challenge. Mech clusters always appear in an initially dormant state. The player can take the time to decide and execute a plan of attack. This puts the player on the offensive, which contrasts with the defensive oriented fights in the base game. Mech cluster elements include world condition makers that poison the air, darken the sky, or create some other world condition. 
shields to block bullets or mortar fire, factories to assemble new mechanoids over time, beacons to call reinforcements, turrets, mortars, and surrounding walls, unstable power units, which you can attack to create explosives, explosions or steel, alarm systems of various types, and mechanoid defenders, including the new Pikeman Sniper Mech. Oh, that sounds great. Each mech clusters generates with a unique layout, presenting a unique tactical puzzles. Some of them will require a frontal assault. Others may be susceptible to mortar bombardment. You may be able to plant explosives inside the cluster before waking it up. A few can be defeated with a key sniper shot to a critical structure. There are many other tactics. Mech clusters can be used to your advantage if you can lure foes or undesired allies into them. And then, again, this could have potentially been an expansion by itself. And then, Imperial Tech. Imperial technology mixes ancient weapons and ultra technology. They wield plasma swords, electrical Zeus hammers, and hyper sharp mono swords. Some of their weapons can speak directly to the wielder through a psychic link. These blade link weapons are frighteningly effective, but bonding to one is a lifelong commitment. Imperials also have a rich tradition of body implants, neural calculators, drill arms, gastro analyzers, skin hardening glands, underskin weapons, poison attacks, aesthetic enhancements, nuclear stomachs, and love enhancers. I don't know exactly what they mean by that, but I like the implication. You can acquire their tech prints and craft all these. Now, I think that's one of the, some of the new stuff we're seeing over here, and it does seem See this, there's like, it looks like there's a requirement. Yeah, um, see it says zero of one over here. I think we might need some stuff to start on those. I think that might be the idea. I'm not sure. Now also, I think um, in my random group of people here, if I recall, see this person here, Matthews, has got this Venom Talon. Installed Venom Talon, okay. So yeah, it's not a, a health penalty. Is it actually literally giving her some sort of poison attack? I think maybe. Presumably in melee? I don't know. Um, all right, that's Imperial Tech. Then we've also got some new music as well. Hey, hey. So that's, that's a nice little perk. Holy cow. So yeah, about uh, 23 bucks in uh, Canadian dollars. Probably that means what, like 19.99 or something US? Maybe cheaper than that, I'm not sure. Um, which seems very reasonably priced for the amount of content that's going on here. I mean, it literally, like I just saw this um, a few minutes ago, and it just dropped at, you know, a couple hours ago or something like that. Uh, something ridiculous, so I obviously have a chance to play. Clearly, uh, we will have to start another playthrough, which, you know, to compensate for the fact that the other one petered out. Um, it'll probably be modless. A bunch, a bunch of mods uh, should already be working on 1.1, which was... Um, the free update from a few days ago, you can see here February 16th, was on Unstable, for example. Uh, maybe 1.1 only went live properly today. That, that is possible. Um, so I'm sure uh, mods are going to be updated, but I'll probably run modless or nearly modless, at least at first, for whatever this is. Don't know when the series is going to start, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, look at, what, what, did someone say tad overpriced for the content? How much crap is in here? Like, I don't know. People, people have, have, have weird standards for things. I mean, I think I think it's reasonably priced, price personally. I already went and bought it. <laughs> but uh, I am a little bit addicted, so that would help a little bit. Uh, folks, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll actually get some RimWorld uh, content soon. See you later. Bye-bye.